Good morning. What a treat I have for you today. I am in uh, West Sussex today, not too far away from uh, Chichester, and uh, we're here to explore the ruins, or what's left of the ruins of Boxgrove Priory. Enjoy your brief little history lesson on this, and uh, let me take you around what's left. You're gonna love it. See you on the other side. Bye for now. Situated in West Sussex lies a simply beautiful and understated ruin which was part of the former Boxgrove Priory. Although a Saxon church had existed on the site before the conquest, this small Benedictine priory was founded in the early part of the 12th century by Robert de Hay and was originally for just three monks and was a dependency by the Lesse Abbey in Normandy. In about 1126, upon the marriage of Robert's daughter Cecily to Roger St John, the number of monks living at Boxgrove was increased by the original three to six. Robert had died by 1165 and by 1187 there were 15 monks and a 19th monk was added to the priory in about 1230 by William de Canesham, the canon of Chichester. The Priory was dissolved in 1536, at the time of the dissolution there were 8 priests and 1 novice, as well as 28 servants and 8 children living in the Priory. After the dissolution the Priory Church became the parish church and land was granted to Sir Thomas West, Baron de la War. The principal remains include a fine two-storey guest house, Roofless, but standing to its full height at the gable ends. And now the ruins have been given Grade 1 listed status, and is well worth a visit, should you be in the area. Do you know what, it's a beautiful morning and I couldn't think of anywhere better than I'd rather be. The drive down from Kent to West Sussex on this stretch was simply stunning the, mo the moment you come off the motorway. And this ruin of what's left of the, the lodging house is just simply brilliant. I mean, you get ruins and then you really do get ruins and this is just something special really is and there's the actual Boxgrove church itself we will explore that because there's some ruins that you've probably seen already around there as well and uh yeah look at this all the flint oh and the morning sun so as a recording this autumn has hit us oh the echo autumn's hit us so we've got the morning dew now, the autumn morning dews, which I love, the crispness of the, as you walk along the fields of the feet, soggy feet because they're damp. But wow, look at this. So obviously this is the main substantial ruin, as I mentioned, there's, there's uh, some extension parts over there, which again, you, you obviously, I've explained in my history lesson, but you know, this is what everybody comes to see. Wow. I mean, for its short shelf life, oh, I said it, ha ha ha, for its short shelf life, it really, really is in amazing condition. For it. it almost looks like a folly. And I think that's the thing about it, is because we're not actually too far from uh, Nor Folly, I think it's called. Um, and you just sort of just get taken away and you think to yourself oh. obviously we know it's not folly I just obviously I just want to clarify that but you know at first you think because of just how the way that it is the way the ruin has fallen into disrepair is what I'm trying to say forgive me it is early in the morning again look at that though. wow and to think this place only started with three monks originally and then obviously it grew 
And they had the 19th one at its peak, I think it was from what I remember now. Look at this. And you look across. There's the sun. Should we capture it? Yeah, we should. Coming round the corner. And then... There we are. Just spectacular. Can you imagine waking up to that at this time of day? Because obviously they would have been up really early, Benedictine uh, monks. So you can imagine them waking up really early. There's some sheep over there, some good old fashioned West Sussex sheep that are giving me the evils. Don't know if you can see them finger of doom, they're just literally on the opposite field. And you've got uh, St Blaise Community Centre, I think it is, just around there, forgive me. The school, it's a beautiful little area this, Boxgrove. Can't wait to actually check out the church. Because <laughs> I've just had a quick walk around, the ruins around there are absolutely breathtaking as well. But look at this, look at this, it's huge. So you can see... I always have to point this out for people if you've never if you're not used to sort of like just even on an amateur history level you see where these square looped holes are they would have been wooden beams that would have been the basis of what you would have latticed over with the floor so if you're ever stuck for sort of understanding how many floors there were or even a rough idea of where the floors were all you have to do is just try and look at these little holes here mainly the the thicker the better so the well the more well squared the better that's normally going to suggest that that's a floor level rather than anything any individual types of levels you can see that there's some post hole bits there that might be suggesting similar on the opposite side so I'd be interesting if there was sort of some maybe some separate rooms that they'd filled in in between wow There's some tiling there, so I'm assuming with that tiling, we would assume that this might have been a, maybe, um, oh God, I can't think. Heating, <laughs> fire. <laughs> uh, yeah, I can't think, you know what I'm trying to say. Sorry again, fire, <laughs> I guess, I, I assume so. Especially this arch curve here. And it does curve up. Yeah, look, that was a chimney, wasn't it? Well, sort of chimney, but it was like a smoke. You can see there, look, it curves back up. So you can imagine that that would have just gone in and out. You can always picture it. It's a shame that the masonry itself isn't in great condition, but you really wouldn't expect it. I mean, time and weather as well as just people just coming here, vandalising, not necessarily even that, just touching it over time and then look as we look through there we can see the church peering through what a beautiful place the only thing that I've noticed is unfortunately you can hear um, I think it's the A road that's making the biggest amount of noise which sort of is a bit frustrating and especially in this time in the morning a lot of commuters school run etc etc so it's starting to get busy, so I'm not actually looking forward to my drive back. I'll tell you what I'm looking forward to. Going to check that church out. Well, let's have a look more at this. Come on. Yeah, I meant fireplace. <laughs> fireplace we got there. Oh dear. Oh look, some birds are nesting in there. We won't disturb them too much. There we go. Can't 
can't see it. Some twigs, and they've been a beautiful place for birds. It's actually been quite quiet for nature. I haven't really heard much. I can hear them now, but when I first came here, that looks interesting. It looks like originally that might have been a repair job. In fact, I'm almost certain of it if you look at it. Look. Is that chalk? It is, isn't it? Yeah. Obviously, you can see the rest of it's flint. So that's a nice little repair job that they've made there. Simply breathtaking, this really is. Right, let's head to the church. Wow. So this kind of reminds me of uh, Wind Chelsea Church, um, which if you're familiar on my channel, I've sort of covered on the paranormal spectral, but I think, you know, there'll probably be another video on that at some point soon, but um, where you've got the ruins of either an old former priory or abbey built onto the actual church itself. And obviously this is called Boxgrove Church. Originally, like, as you probably knew in the, the original lesson that this site was formerly a Saxon church that probably would have been built on here and obviously as the Normans came across uh, they didn't have to travel far from where they were originally obviously coming through putting their stamp on everything and so obviously so that Saxon sort of just gets pushed out and then obviously the Norman starts to creep in and then obviously you start seeing these types of priories you start to see the wealth share that they had etc etc you not obviously we talk about the rape of Bramber as well that type of area again East Sussex West Sussex not too far away all those castles that started popping up again you know so again we you know we, we talk about it on a loose level but it's just to sort of give you a bit more of a context really but the, yeah, absolutely beautiful. Okay, so we're now walking around the church grounds itself. We won't be able to go in today because it's just too early. But it's an absolutely beautiful church. I've actually seen photos from the inside and I think actually probably the, the best way to appreciate it is for you to actually come down. But yeah, it's a shame I won't be able to come in it today because I'm just too early. I've seen lots of dog walkers walking around. Oh, look at this. Isn't that lovely? And then we've got our gravesite. The, the gravesite ex extends over, obviously, it's a very active gravesite still. So you can, I've been having a look. I do like looking at gravesites and looking at the dates and everything else. I think most people do, don't they, when they come here. It's just a sort of form of being nosy and obviously the stories that they could tell. Look at that, as the sun's beating down on it. Spectacular. So I stopped filming and I just sort of like took some time to myself. I, I do believe now that, I always mention this now in my videos, that when I took a year off, um, I really learned to appreciate taking my time again, learning what it really meant to explore history, why I was doing it, etc, etc. And I was just sort of sitting here now and I was thinking the same thing and thinking, do you know what, like... When I woke up this morning, I knew I was going to come here. I've done all my research, enough that you can do, because I don't, because I do sometimes leave a little bit because I want to explore it for myself as well. If I know too much, sort of just, I think some of you understand that, especially on my channel, because I like to think I give you quite a good history lesson. But 
I still want to try and leave some bits for myself so when I come here I can experience it because it's all well and good you know talking about it or but you've got to really come here and actually feel it engage with it get its energy and uh yeah, I was just sort of walking, I was just sort of, well, I wasn't walking, well, I was actually. I was sort of like just slowly pacing is probably the polite way of doing it. And uh, taking a couple of photos and I was just sort of thinking to myself, do you know what, it's, I'm very fortunate that I've got the time that I can do this and, you know, to, to experience these places and to sort of really experience the history and even though, you know, sometimes my history lessons or my videos can be a little bit sort of um, not consistent, is probably the way I'd say it. I do think that, you know, even though I do that, that when I'm here, it's, it really makes it all worth it knowing that, you know, I've put in that time and all of that and it really comes through. So even now, look, I'm just doing this in normal time. So at the back end of that ruin now, look at this, so pretty. You know, and I think to myself, even though I don't live that far away from here, so it took me about an hour and a half to get here from where I live, but it's really early in the morning, so it's it's about eight o'clock now as, we, as I'm talking to you, eight o'clock in the morning. And it's uh, just a lovely day, just to sort of witness this. And you sometimes think to yourself, if I came here in a different season or if a different time of day, I wonder if the feelings that I'd have would be any more or less different, you know? I think sometimes at a place like this, probably not, you know? Probably not. Well, as I stand here with the remains of the, the ruinous remains <laughs> there go, of uh, Boxgrove Priory with the church just there. And th there are, um, there are some other rooms, but they're, they're quite, um, they're under the ground basically. So the foundations, etc., etc. Uh, forgive my sort of lack of verbal communication today. <laughs> it's just really early in the morning. And as much as I really enjoy it, I can't think straight. Oh God, it just makes me laugh really. I think to myself, oh God, I'm really excited about making this video and I can't even talk. Fireplace. <laughs> anyway, I really hope you enjoyed this brief video. I'm sorry we didn't get into the church, but uh, we did the bulk of it. And really more importantly than that, you know, I, I thoroughly recommend that if you are in the area, you should totally come down. There's a few really cool things around this area. In fact, I'm probably gonna record them today. Um, so stay safe much love to all of you out there and uh yeah spread the word of the channel take care everybody see ya kapow